All right, library haul, movie recommendations. Uh, first one up is Hugo. This is a movie that I never finished, and it's supposed to be for the kid this weekend. I hope it's good enough for him. I mean, he's not too picky, but it's usually because we watch animated movies, you know, animated baby movies, no Pixar. And I'm not saying Pixar is a baby movie guy. You know, I still am interested. When a Pixar movie comes out, I'm still as um, interest, interested in seeing it as I, as I was before, for the most part. Lightyear, I probably will never watch. I just have not heard, I have not heard anything good about that movie. Um, but that one's like kind of like a, it's, yeah, it's a kid's movie, but it's kind of one of those kids' movies that they aren't making it strictly for kids, you know what I mean? I don't know, I, I could be completely wrong, but hopefully he likes it, because... Worst case, you can just watch YouTube, but I don't like him, I don't like when he does that. He did that for when he, we watched We Bought a Zoo. It was supposed to be for him, but he wasn't interested in it because it wasn't really a kids' movie. It was more like a, you know, like a, a kids. Still, I'm not saying it wasn't a kids' movie. Kids still could watch it. Actually, it had a lot of swearing in it for a PG movie, and it's a newer PG movie too. It was like 2011, you know, 10 years ago, not you no know, 30. I know, I know. Back in the day, we, did, we didn't have a PG-13. PG movies were very edgy, going a lot more than they will ever would today. Even a PG-13, honestly. All right, next one up. This is a book that I saw. Um, I'm really Simeon had, he was going over the book, and he, uh, says, Carmen, I almost bought this book myself. See, it's, the lighting is so bad. I need to point it towards the iPad. I, I, I hate doing nightly videos. Nightly videos? I hate doing videos at night because I don't have very good lighting. I have the lighting that is just good enough to read on my bed. That's why, that's why I'm filming right now. That's why I have the iPad propped up. So yeah, Carmen, I'll be like this. Yeah, I just, I don't... I mean, if I if I if, if I keep getting interrupted, or if I have to do something, if I have to go downstairs for whatever reason, and I'm not able to film it, finish it film, filming tonight, then I'll probably just do it tomorrow. Yeah, Carmen, a, a series I almost bought myself, but I'm glad they had the library. Although I would have bought it myself, it was pretty cheap. This is a hardcover. It was like the price that you would pay for a soft cover, but it was hardcover on Amazon. So I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been too angry about that. But I also have a lot like what I I ha also have a lot of books I want for. Um, and already have had to make, already have had to make sacrifices. So you know it's one down. Uh, Preacher book five. That's a reread. Oh, I should have ordered these rereads. What else? If I get if I get interrupted again or there's whatever going on, then noise and I'll do that then. But yeah, Preacher book five reread. Because I like that series so much, and I uh, surprisingly there's a lot that I forgot about in that series. I'll try and order these. These are also two rereads. Re Sandman I had to get it from my from in, uh, G Milk's Interloans, but they had, of course, the, today when I went, they had my local library, but they didn't have when I was putting it in, and I wouldn't. I, I didn't want to gamble it. Do not tell me that's loose. It feels very thin. I, I know it's the same version they have with the library. Yeah, the, the last one was like much thicker. They definitely don't. Definitely not eight issues in there. Hellblazer Bloodline back on Garth uh, back to Garth and not not back to Garth Ennis's but um it's Garth Ennis's run um now finally we're back not finally we're back to Steve Dillon now I think this was the last one I because I, I was because again this is, a, this is a reread um no it's not I was gonna say I think we have at least three of these thick trades to go through maybe four before we're done with Garth Ennis's run I'm counting the Jim Delano when Jamie Delano was doing his last few issues, and then Garth Ennis came out. It was like halfway between, and then Garth, and then Garth Ennis comes back on. That was the last volume. Uh, the Tony Stark Dan Iron Man dance. See, you can't even see it. Tony Stark Dan Slot Iron Man run. Uh, I heard it's good, but so maybe I should do it. Should it down here, but not like it's really just near my condition that said it was good, and um, I do trust him, but. You know, it's other most mostly most everyone else that say it wasn't good, but they don't like Garth. I don't like uh, Dan Slot to begin with. So, I right, that, that's a sticky note. Tom, I can get rid of that. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Volume Four. No, I have everything. I, I moved some some books away. I was making sure I didn't put ones back. Um, Autumn Lands Book 2. I did not know that they... See, this is the thing that kind of uh, angers me about G-Milks versus Interloans. It is... I never think to look... I mean, I, I do now. But I never think to look if they don't have a G-Milks to see if they have the Interloans. Sometimes I forget. And I guess I just, like, I was just kind of done with Autumn Lands. I didn't... I wasn't the hugest fan of Autumn Lands Book 1. 
Um, but there's only two volumes in the series, and I have, I, if I do that for most every other book, I might, well do, might as well do it for this one. Um, Fantastic Four, First Family. I, I think this is going to be like a, I think this is like going to be a retelling of their origin story. Yeah, it's just, I hate it. I, there's no way to fix it. Maybe, maybe if I do like this, maybe, there we go. That's what I should do. Now I want, now I want to do it all over again. Guys, you guys in the comments are screaming, do this, do this, and uh, this is what happens when you don't, well, not, not, that I, not that I would do this, but this is what happens when you don't do a live stream. Because then if it was a live stream, people would have said already. I would have already moved it. Uh, Spider-Woman Origin. Now, there was a Spider-Woman book that I was reading. It was by Brian Michael Bendis. I don't think it was this. But even even so, they had this one. I wanted to read a Spider-Woman book. Oh, good. It's exploding out of the pages of New Avengers. I've read actually read the New Avengers run. I actually, I, I, I have a way. I do not um, hate Brian Michael Bendis' writing as much as other people do. I have a very high tolerance for bad books, apparently. For bad writers, apparently. He's not a bad writer. I'm saying, like, you know, modern. Like, he's kind of fallen off the map, if you will. Because he, he used to be unstoppable. Like, when it, was, when it was Brian Michael Bendis, it was a bestseller. Ultimate Spider-Man, Alias, New Avengers, you know. Although, I don't know if New Avengers sold as well. That could be... No, it went for a long time. Of course it did. It's like, what, like, six volumes? Maybe even more. Uh, excellence. I'm hoping. Now this is this is what we call a gamble. They did show volume two um, on interloan, so I can get you know, just two different things for um, for putting in the inter interloan books. Which is books I get, they get books I get from other libraries. They bring them over to our library, so I have to go all the way over there to get there get that one at that library. Um, but they had the second volume on Interloans, first volume on Gmail, because it's a two-volume series, Excellence. I'm hoping they have a second volume. But, you know, you never know. I could hate the book. Did I get the best reviews? But it looked interesting, and I, I don't... And I'm kind of in, in the middle with... Uh, was it Brendan Thomas? Brendan... No, Brendan... Uh, no, Brendan Thomas. Sorry, he's not the guy. This is the guy I was thinking of, I don't think. I'm thinking of the guy who wrote Motor, Motor Crush. Because one of the books I got this time around, um, this, yeah, this time, this time around, was also by, um, the Motor Crush writer, which I, Brendan Fletcher, that's who it is, um, Bolero, now, when I was looking up books for, that was by, um, what's his face, the one that did Rain Like Hammers, this one showed up, I couldn't put it through Interloans, I think it was too soon, but I put it through Gmilks, you're allowed to do that through Gmilks, Gmilks, I think, exists, Primarily because you can get books earlier than intro loans, and it's just a, it's just a quicker way to do it. I think it's, I don't know what the reasoning behind it was because they still have um, intro loans. The IOL, yes, Bolero. Each this is one of those books that it's going to take a long time to read each issue because each issue was fifty nine pages, which is like almost quadrupled the amount. Uh, no, almost triple the amount. I mean, it actually, is triple the amount of your average issue. Like here. Um, but not the best example. This is four issues. Look how thin this book is. You know, with one more issue, I can make it much bigger than uh, than it already is. Uh, Astonishing Ant Man. I think this is the last last volume, the Trial of Ant Man. Of uh, at least of Nick Spencer's run. I said I said the right word. I thought I was like, wait, no, it's not the right one. So it's a bit of a story between behind this book. This um, it's Silk and oh, it's twenty twenty one issue. It's a 2021 issue. It's a 2021 series. Oh, I should have known that. Oh. I'm going to be mega, I'm going to be ultra confused. Um, but, so I made a new friend at the library today. Um, like you have, like I do with Mark. And I will talk about comics. Although he's, he mainly gives me comics. We don't really discuss as much. But I found the person that we discuss comics with. I, I, I discuss comics with now. Like she was, Ironically enough, all the books she was saying, have you read this? I read that. I had. One of them she knew I had read because she'd seen it in my catalog. I think she was just checking out the books. And the other one she was asking, like, yeah, have you read this? And yeah, I read this. And we, I re recommended books to her. It was, it's nice. Like, I, I don't have that with a lot of my friends. A lot of my friends, you know, the closest I have is my friend, um, I think just bought, buy, bought the books. Oh, it's Flash. I like Flash TV shows. I'll pick up that Flash book. I don't think she read it. She mainly picks up DC books. I think she has, but she never really discussed comics. It was everything else besides that. But yeah, Silk. The not issue, not volume one. Cause I, it's just one that I, now it's 26 books I have to read per day. Because I, I want to do one of each. And I just only, I, I picked this up because I thought it's the first volume. 
I should have known because it was as across the Spider Verse that her first volume was. I mean, it's not even the character that a lot of people like, but you know, I had it at the library. One of those things where I just decided, you know, why not? Uh, Star Wars Darth Vader. Volume 2, hopefully. Yep, Volume 2. The Kieran Gillen run. Also a reread for Kieran Gillen. Uh, for St Darth Vader's Kieran Gillen. Uh, I can't I can't do this. Uh, Cable Deadpool, Volume 3. I don't know why it's so diff difficult for me to do it over here. I think because I have the books here. I, this is, like, not going well. <laughs> I'm not saying this is a failure and I, you know, it's, I should have done this or should have done that. I should have... I, I, I couldn't have gone earlier, you know? Alright, Cable and Deadpool, Volume 3. It's so annoying to have to be like, what volume is it? Because, like, I, I don't remember. Alright, Volume 3. See, it's dark. You can't see it. I have to do this. Yeah, Volume 3, Cable and Deadpool. Yet yeah, another reread. I, I, I specify that because I'm, I'm like, kind of... Not that I get annoyed, but I'm like... You know, it's like someone will say, Oh, that series is really good. You really like it. It's like, yeah, I've read it before. I understand some people are newer than others, and no one has read it, and no one has watched every single one of my videos. Not not expecting you to either, but it's like one of those things where it's like, yeah, I have read it before, and it's like it's more of a me thing than a them, than a them thing, honestly. Uh, a reread of Jim Zub's Dun Dungeons and Dragons. I remember nothing from this series, and I read it only like two months ago. I was just getting on Wayward, I think, when I read the series, and I mean even even Wayward, I don't remember a whole lot from. That was one of the ones that um, we were talking about, me and the library girl. Um, so, Batgirl Volume 3. I think I'm going to have to remind, remind myself, because I think they didn't have Volume 4 on Gmail, because I put it through Interloans. Because Interloans takes a lot longer to for them to, for it to come in, and for them to, like, okay it than, it than it does to come in. Like, I think it'll get a week longer sometimes. Yeah, Volume 3. So, I always put in the first night. Because all I have to do is just ask, the worst case, it's going to ask them to hold the books for, like, a little bit longer. Uh, this one was the Brendan Fletcher one, Isola, and it's another one. I think, I think they had they had both issue Williams. I think they did. I think they did. I don't know, but Isola. I think they did. Could be wrong. Uh, Light Brigade. Never heard of this series. Now is this a? I don't think this is an. Uh, what do you call it? Um, it's not, a, not an original graphic novel. I think it's a. Yeah, this is Pierre G. Tomasi. Um, I wanted to get Black Adam. They didn't have Black Adam. No, it's one through four. So yeah, pretty thick for one th only collecting four issues. Ugh. Like that. I need to remember how I have it. Like that. Night Brigade. I mean, I'm telling you guys what book it is. It just looks unprofessional to be like this. And you can't see what the book is. Uh, all new X Men: The Ultimate Adventure. It's not like a. It's not a big deal for me. I hope. I hope it's not for you guys. Like, sound off in the comments if it really makes a big difference. Uh, that was a re read along with this. The Guardian series. Which I probably so after after Ultimate Adventure I may just get Black Vortex and refresh my memory on what happened because the problem with All New X Men and um, Guardians is that All New X Men came out first so even though I'm almost always going in the same like, I got Volume Six of that and then like I, that that yada yada um, I'm always like when I just when I go for a crossover I'm always super far behind on then goes X Men yeah X Men I think I am far behind which is weird. I think it'll be too far. I think it'll be Guardians to be far ahead on. Not far ahead. You know what I mean. Words. Can't say them. Infection. Sonic 4 on 4. Secret Avengers. God Level. Volume 3 of 3. I decided why not. I, I'm not a big fan of that series. But it's the last, last of it. And I'll have to read it again. Cowl. By Kyle Higgins. Almost bought this book myself. Glad they had it. Another one that they have. They say they might have volume 2. But eh, it's a gamble. Because sometimes, like, so the thing on the intro loans, it'll say, it'll say book, and it'll have, like, a little parenthesis in, in a number. If it doesn't have that parenthesis number in it, and, I, and even, even when you refresh a page or do what, I, do what I do, and go to the page, and it'll go back, you know, sometimes it'll show up, but most of the time it doesn't. And it's really weird that it doesn't do that sometimes. And that usually means we don't have it. It was just like a glitch, or we, we had it before. I don't know what that means. Like sometimes they say, oh, no, no library at all has it. I don't know why it's on there. I've actually said that before, so I don't know why, how, I don't know why that's even on there. True Metropolitan, almost done with this series, and even though I've reread it, I'm still sad to see it go, even though, like, like how would I be sad to see it go a second time? Uh, finally, this is an exception, America Book 2. Let's segue right on to the reviews, starting with America. Not good. 
not as bad. I thought it'd be much, much worse. I think the thing about that is that um, I imagine a scenario about it for a book that even as bad as Marvel is with the books that they published and you know, are publishing, you know, again, you guys know what I'm getting at. Um, they would never publish this book. If they, how bad I thought the book would be, like it's not as bad as I, as I, as I, as I it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Is what I'm trying to say. I mean, it's bad. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's an underrated book. It's not at all. I only got that second volume because I want to be a completist and I want to read all the series and I have to finish it. Um, and they have this the sequel series that is the um, that's the why do I always miss my hands? They have a sequel series. God, words! I can't words. That the sequel series is much it's much better than the original. I can't I know why I couldn't words. Um, but it wasn't as bad. You know, it, there's definitely stuff in it that was terrible and awful, and I was like, like I it was hard to get through some issues. I will admit, it's being just kind of boring. It's just, it's bad. It's honestly, bad. I, I understand why people don't like it though. Like people absolutely despise it. I didn't like it either. I would say everyone's giving me like a zero out of ten. I give like a one point five out of ten, because there was only like the artwork was pretty good in, in parts. And it wasn't like you know terrible. There's there's panels and there's one panel in there that I honestly like should probably get, honestly give it a one out of ten just for that panel alone. It was terrible. It wasn't it wasn't good at all. I, I will say that I didn't enjoy myself. It wasn't so bad. It was good. It was just terrible. And I was expecting to be so bad it was good. So it was kind of it was kind of disappointing honestly because I thought it'd be so bad that it would be laughably bad. But it was just kind of like oh this is just like like Squirrel Girl is the absolute worst. And this was around that, it was just, so on a scale from Ms. Marvel, which I really like, um, to, I just, let's say Miles Morales, Miles Morales. On a scale from Miles Morales to, to Squirrel Girl, it was a, um, uh, it was a few spaces below Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. A lot of spaces, yeah. A lot of spaces behind that. So, like, Moon Girl is in the middle. America is, like, right next to, um, Squirrel Girl. So, like, it's, a, it's like a scale of 1 to 10, say. It's on 9, right next to Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl was the worst for me. Absolute worst. Uh, first, worst one up is the movie Doctor Strange, which, ironically enough, had America Chavez in it. Uh, I liked it enough. It wasn't, you know, it, I think it's one of those movies that everyone says is really bad. And, unlike with America, I actually like this one. Um, but... They said it was really bad, and I was like, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I honestly forgot I actually wanted to watch this movie. Like, I was excited to see it, but then word of mouth got out, and I was like, yeah, I'll wait. And then I just had no interest in it after hearing so many bad things about it. kind of forgot that I actually wanted to see the movie myself um, to begin with. But yeah, I had to talk to Strange. Uh, Rat Queens was good. Um, there was, I hope it's not too loud for you guys. There was um, two specials in here. One of them made sense. The other one, it was, what was it called? Neon Static. It was sci-fi. It was so jarring. The artwork was jarring. The um, setting was jarring. Everything about it was jarring. And it was written by the same guy. It wasn't written by the other guy. And when it, when it moves to Ryan Ferrier's writing uh, on Rat Girls, Rat, Rat Girls, Rat Queens, I did like it. I still liked it because I thought it was actually going somewhere. But things just happen in this series. And honestly, they kind of happened with... Um, uh, a certain character, there's thing, something that happens to two different characters. I don't know if it's the same, yeah, it was the same thing. There's a thing that happens to two different characters, and both times it comes out of nowhere. So it wasn't too jarring for me, but it was more jarring here because it actually made sense. It makes sense with the first character, without giving too much away. It makes sense with the first character, why that happened to them. But yeah, the same thing happens to two characters. And it makes sense by having the first person, but not the second person. It's kind of like, oh yeah, let's do this. I was still interesting. I still, I still like that series. Yeah, one more to go. They didn't have it. I didn't get it because it wasn't on Gmail because I thought it would be. So I was I waited that long and I was like, oh wait, it's not on here. I should I should remember that because I oh I was I kept telling myself, hey, there's this one there's one volume of the series that they don't have. Make sure you have make they don't have on Gmail because I put it in loans. Make sure you're keeping track of that. And I thought because I was getting the hard covers, it was one of the soft cover volumes that's collected in the hard covers. It's two soft covers per hard cover. I thought for a second there, oh, it's just that one, but. No, it's the last. It's the last volume of the series entirely. The last volume, no one seems to like. Even comic book roundup, they, they, they give the last issue like a really low score. So I get like a three point five, and it's critic review. And they give America like a seven point nine. That should tell you how much they hated, uh, how loathed that run gets. 
uh, Galactus Trilogy, the ultimate Galact Galactus Trilogy. I didn't like it the first time. I liked it a little bit, a little bit better the second time. There's a lot more that I liked about it, about, about it than I did the first time. But I think it just gets too, like, wordy and too, um, exposition dumpy. You know, sometimes it makes sense. But they, I think the exposition dumps that I hate is when it's talking about a whole bunch of science stuff. It's a whole bunch of science words you don't know. And like, I don't mind when they're saying, like, okay, we gotta, they're making out the plan. I'm like, we're gonna go through the, through the front door. And we're gonna turn off the lights. I don't mind that kind of exposition. But when talking about, when it's throwing a bunch of words at you, you don't even know, like, you can't even process because it's science -y words. I'm not a science major at all. I don't like science I either, which is kind of funny because I, I like Spider-Man, I like sci-fi, um, but like science itself, like science, I you know. So, throwing a bunch of words at me, I, I don't understand, and I'm like, okay. It, it, it brings it down for me a bit. But the upsides outweigh the downsides this time around, and I actually really enjoyed it this time. Not, not, like a, not a highest recommendation at all, but if, you, if your library has, and you have any sort of, like, if you have, like, a bit of an interest, like, a small smidgen of an interest, I'd say pick it up. Especially if you like Warren Ellis's writing. Because, see, it's not, like, edgy Warren Ellis. I don't think it ever had, they had, like, really, they had jokes, but it wasn't, like, you know, trans, it wasn't on the level of trans metropolitan. It was on a level of what you're allowed to do for Marvel. They never pushed the envelope. I would love to see him. Has Warren Ellis ever done a Deadpool story? I'd love to see how he, how he handled Deadpool. I'd search the trip to the guy's alley. But if, if, if he hasn't written a Deadpool story yet, he's never going to. He will never be hired at Marvel. He'll sooner be hired back at Image Comics than he would Marvel. But he is writing something for DC, so I wonder how he got back in there. I wonder, uh... I wonder who, um... Who was in charge of that. I, I, have, I have said before how, um, I... I am very on the fence about how I feel about Warren Ellis as a person. You know, it, again, I what I've heard is that the people that are accusing him of doing bad things, they push him to do it. That's what I've heard because they want to advance their careers. That's what I've heard. That's it's, I think they call it conjecture. That's it's a theory, crackpot theory of mine. Uh, Mons, I enjoyed this one. I didn't. I, bad Friends was absolutely um, depressing. This one was too, but not as, and it was you know pretty good. Uh, it was a bit disappointing because I thought it would be more of like a mo more focus on what the um, first the, the, that what that preview page did, the preview story from the um, free comic book day version of that of the uh, Korean comics did, because it, it's a, the the, the um, preview it, chapter they give you it's chapter like ten or eleven or something. It's like at the least it was chapter five, so I'm reading through this entire. Book and I'm like, when are we gonna get to that part? Why, why isn't it here? What, what, what's going on? It was very repetitive too. This book was pretty a bit, a bit too long. It could have been, I could have cut a hundred pages from this book, and it, yeah, I'm gonna say a hundred pages, and you still would have gotten what they were trying to tell you. And I get it, you know, it's supposed to be like, hey, this, this, she really likes this guy, but this guy keeps messing up. So of course she's gonna keep giving him chances and chances after chances. I can relate to that. There's people that I've, there's friends that I have given. 4,000 chances to, like, you know, people don't change, and they don't. So I understand why they did that. Honestly, if I, whenever, whenever I, um, write my story, it's gonna be a me memoir, when I do that for my high school, it's gonna be high school memoir, my high school years, it's gonna have the same problem that mom says. So at least there's that. I know that I'm not alone, because, again, the same thing there. But my book, well, actually, it's, well, it's a whole book and said, yeah. But yeah, I, I, still, I still liked it. It was very interesting. I had to read it, I didn't have to read it all at once. It was by chapter, which was nice. Because I probably would have, I probably would have gone insane. Because it was a pretty thick book. Princeless, I did get, did I get the next one? I don't think I did. No, I was putting it out to it too. I thought I saw it today, the book itself, physically. I was putting it away to return. I, I'm done with that series. At the very least, I'm giving, I'm giving it a break like I did with the Moon Girl. It's, just, it's, it's the same issues I have with Moon Girl. It's like, oh, this character is the best, and everyone, oh, like, the men, oh, they're all stupid or jerks, and it's like, stop doing this. No one likes that when you do that. That's not how you do, it's not how you write empowering females, is by downplaying everyone else. You know, people like Black Widow because she's formidable, but she'd also be taken down by anyone, anyone. Well, not by anyone, but almost, by, by some people. Like, she's not like Captain Marvel where she's overpowered, no. She's had the same, I think the same amount of power she's always had. There are characters that give her, like she, that run her through the, that run her through the dirt, but she can still pick up, pick her feet back up and defeat them. And you know, it's an effort. And nowadays, with, like the prince list, like, I, what's her, Adrian, I think her name is? She can just, everything she does is, is, is with ease. Sometimes a bit of a, a struggle, but like it's almost always seems to be like a, 
like it's easy for her to overcome the battles, the phys physically, anyways. And again, it's still an interesting story wise. The character, the characters aren't super annoying all all the time, so I can still. It's again, it's what I like from the series that over that kind of overweighs what I don't for the most part. Uh, Sonic is still good. Um, I don't like that they did what they did with Eggman so soon. I wish they had kind of kept Eggman as they had him before. Um, spoilers. So Eggman was like this. Eggman had like brain damage, not brain damage. Like he had like an amnesia. They did that kind of storyline. I wanted more of amnesia Eggman, like a nice Eggman, because he's a pretty funny character. Like he's supposed to be like this kind of like Ned Flandersy type, where he's like a pacifist, but he's like a really big pacifist. Like he won't even like lift a, lift a finger at anything. You know, he's kind of, again like a Ned Flanders type, where like he's very nice and won't say anything bad about people. And it's like you know, like if you told like a Told him, a, told him a dark joke, he'd be offended by it. Not offended by it, but like, oh my god, why'd you say that? Ha <laughs> ha, it's, you know, like, like laughing. Like, 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 why am I over explaining? But he's not super, super religious like Ned Flanders is, but you know, you know what I mean. I hope. I hope. Power Rangers, still good. Um, Again, it's missing something, but not, but it's getting better each volume. I'm noticing it less and less, that one thing that's missing. I, I couldn't tell you, honestly. Uh, I think what's missing is an actual beginning. It seems to start from wherever they want to start it from, which makes sense. But it's also kind of like I wish I I still can't tell them apart either. I still can't. I still I'm on volume whatever I'm on right now, like volume five. I still what volume four? I don't know. I still can't tell the characters apart. It's not good. But I think it says more about me than it does the book itself. Still good. I still still highly recommend. It. If you're a Power Rangers fan, you'll eat this up. Um, uh, Trans Metropolitan, my favorite volume so far. This had everything I like about the Trans Metropolitan series and more. Sandman? Again, it's so funny how I've had a complete turn. Did I go over the last volume? I know, I know I didn't review the first volume, but let's just do an over let's just do an all around review of Sandman, the first three volumes so far. I have had a huge turnaround for this series. I was extremely, extremely critical of this series. For the longest time. For the longest time, I was like, this is a series I just do not like. It's I didn't hate it. It was like, what I didn't like about this series, like, it stood out, like, like never before. Um, you know, in the upsides, never really outweighed the downsides. Sometimes it did. Most time it did. Like, there was, again, there was parts in the I really enjoyed. I, I enjoyed the Barbie story. I enjoyed, like, the... I enjoyed, like, the, the dino... 24 hours is still my favorite issue of Sandman. It will always be my favorite issue of Sandman, probably. But I don't know. It was just one of those things. I think it was because I wasn't used to it, maybe. I don't know. But now I love it. Now I just, like, I'm, I am I look forward to reading it each week. Well, each... By week. Or each day when I'm on the book. When I'm reading the book per day. Uh, Preacher. Just love it. Love it. It's so damn good. I've always loved Preacher. Never a series that I read because I didn't like it. No, I love this series. One of, if not my favorite comic book of all time. One of, I would say. It's on. The, it's in the top five. Green Arrow Year One. If I had a top fifty, it would be it would be number twenty five. Honestly, it's really damn good. And Andy Diggle should have an ongoing Green, Green Arrow series. Get him on back on Green Arrow and not whoever you get for Green Arrow. I don't care if it's Joshua Williamson. Actually, it's Joshua Williamson, right? I think it is. So never mind. You know what? Have him have him come on for an annual. Do like a Green Arrow spectacular again. And have him come back. Was he on there for um for the hundred page spectacular? They had a lot of people on there. I don't know if he was on there. For the 100 page... I, I don't remember a whole lot of stories from that 100 page spectacular. So I, I kind of need to read that again. I probably will. But yeah, I don't remember. Uh, Hellblazer. Um, so Jimmy Delano's run ends with a whimper. It always did for me. I mean, again, I am on the fence about Jimmy Delano's run. It's again, again like I'm going to say the same thing I said about all these series... The outsides, the when it's, when it's good, it's really good. It is spectacular. But when it's bad, it's really bad. It's really annoying because he just does like a scripted thing, and he's just you don't need. It's like he's saying like it's like the artwork. The artwork is there. You don't need to explain what's going on in the artwork. Not like not like that kind of thing. But like I feel like without you know doing the over explanation because he wants to write a book, not it's not a comic book, obviously. Um, in that regard. Not in the um, Silver Age regard where they, they thought we were simpletons and had to, uh, you know, it's, it's, Dan, it's Dan Lee used to do. Um, 
which I, I love Stanley's writing, but one, one of the things I will always, always give him crap over is that um, he always would do that thing. Like, Spider Man would be swinging through a town and be like, I use my webs to distract him while I go over here, you know, that kind of thing. That's not what Hellblade, that's not, that's not what Gel Delano does. What Delano does is he's going overly descriptive. Like, he'll have like a flower on the, on, like, he'll show like a flower and like he's picking up the flower. And like, John picks up the flower, I pick up the flower since it's, it's spoken in first person. Uh, its petals prick me like a, like, I don't even know, like that kind of descriptive kind of thing, which you can tell in the artwork has just happened. You don't, you don't need to use the, you don't need to uh, explain, over explain it. And, as, and also, it's a thing, like you're, like you're it's, it's, you know, it's over the artwork, you know? But Garth Ennis he is stellar. You know, sometimes he runs into the trappings of what Jamie Delano does, but hardly ever. It's story first, descriptors a descriptions after. And when it's descriptive, it needs to be. Uh, Batgirl Volume 2. It's a really solid series, and Gail Simone's uh, it's volume two for Gail Simone, and it, it gets even better. It's one of those series that each volume, like gets like it's like, it's like it ramps up the ramps up the volume, ramps up ramps up production. Peter Panzerfaust. Now I thought they didn't have volume two on Gmail, because they did. I looked up Peter Panzerfaust once. They said, "Oh no, we only have volume one," and I put it through inch long. Said, "Nope, we don't have volume two. So I'm hoping that they have. And that they have volumes three, four, and five, and then volume two I'll just have to get through G Milks because I love this series. This is a, this is a knockout. This is a surprise. I mean, it should have been because he, he, he did Rat Queens. I also like Rat Queens. I got a little slow, not that slow here and there, but like I got into the trap things of what I don't like, like the kind of not stereotypes, but like the familiarities, the tropes of war books. I'm not I'm not a huge war story kind of. I'm not a huge. I'm not a big fan of war stories. I liked some of it what Garth Ennis wrote, and if if I don't like what Garth Garth Ennis wrote for War, I probably won't like what anyone else likes for War. Like some like pretty, I, and I understand like he's he's a big fan of War comics, but I think his best stories are when it's just like, like you can still tell a War story, but it's not actual War story. Like you know, Preacher isn't like a War comic, but it has elements of War in it. You could, you could argue, and, I, and so like I, I like it there, but I, I don't know what it is about War comics, honestly. But yeah, Peter, Peter Pan's are frozen to knockout. Bully Wars was that uh, is for everyone kind of book, and you could tell. The best way to describe this book is it's like an early two thousands Cartoon Network series. And if that's up your alley, and you don't mind it being kid friend, extremely kid friendly. You'll like this book. But uh, that's Songbird, Blackbird, by Sam Humphreys. Pretty good. Tad bit disappointing. It's mentioned. It's mentioned. No, it's tad bit disappointing. But I'll, I'll know I liked it. The artwork was the best. Like that artwork stood out. There's a there's also a um, variant comic, a variant issue, variant cover, variant cover for an issue done by Sam Takeda, who did the artwork for Monstrous. And that I wish I, was done, I wish the artwork was done by done by Sam Takeda. Like some of it was done by Sam Takeda and some by the other guy, other guy, I think it's a girl. I don't I don't know who it was, but you know it's one of one of those things. And yeah, but it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, you want to sacrifice that artwork for Sam Takeda's. But I'm also like, eh, maybe. Uh, X-Men. This is the one down one. It was still good. The 25th... Oh, wait. Did I already go with the 25th issue? I think I did. I did. That was last time. Never mind. Uh, Ant-Man... Oh, did I? I don't think I did. Whatever the 40th anniversary issue was... No, I said, no that was more recent. Whatever the... Um, no, I think it was. It was the... It was like a double-sized issue. It was really boring. I was like... H H twenty five, I believe. But other than that, this is a good series. Uh, Ant Man Volume Two. You know, I I like this Ant Man run, but it's also not the spectacular. It's kind of a middle of the road Ant Man run, middle of the road Ant Man run. But it's one of those that I'm not expecting much, so I still come out liking it. You know, and, anyway, and I still end up wanting more. Uh, Secret Avengers Volume Two. Again, this is one of those series I'm like. Uh, if, if this series was more than three volumes, I would put it, I would throw it away. I'd put it down and never read it again. Not throw it away, obviously. It's a, it's a library comic. I can't do that. But, you know, it's aggravating. Already been over America. Darth Vader, stellar. Poe Dameron, boring. Dropped it. There's two volumes left. I'm like, nope. I have no patience to read two more volumes of this series. And what's really funny is that it's done by Charles Soule. I love Charles Soule's writing. Kind of. You know, Charles Soule is one of those writers that I forget. Because Curse Words, you would think after reading Curse Words, that he would bring that kind of, right, bring that level of um, 
effort into all of his books. And even if it wasn't that high, the Curse Wars is probably my favorite, it's still my favorite Trouble Soul uh, series. Um, you think he would bring that, even like a little bit less, it would still be good. But no, it's not. I don't know if it's, it's, and it's not biased or anything like that. I think it's just like, I'm not a huge fan of Star Wars when it's not written by Karen Gillan or Jason Aaron. It's the only two that I've liked. And, and let's just go into Han Solo. Um, and that one too. I like that one. The Han Solo is my second favorite Star Wars comic I've read so far. I have, I have, I have not read a whole lot. So don't say, don't, uh, take that with a small, take that with a grain of salt. I've read Darth Vader, Jason Aaron, Star Wars, Poe Dameron, uh, Han Solo, I think it's four, or five. Oh, and I've read the, I read like, some miscellaneous issues, so let's, let's say five. Round it to five, because I read some miscellaneous issues. I read, it, read one by Den, uh, Dennis Hopeless I really liked, and it was Darth Vader one. Um, yeah. I, I think it's also the, the character of Poe Dameron. The sequel series did, did, did him no favors. But you would think a comic series that's focused on him would do him those favors. And you'd be like, oh, this is the Poe Dameron we should have gotten in the movies. And yeah, I will argue that, but I don't know. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a partial bias like I have with, like, um, Inhumans. But I wouldn't say it's bias against Inhumans. I actually liked Charles... Actually, it's Charles' whole book I liked. I liked the Inhumans. It's, it's singular, not plural. It's Inhuman book. That one, I, that one I really liked. It got really good. So I, I like that one. Should, should like Poe. Uh, Cable and Deadpool, Volume 2. Complete turnaround. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping they have the at least the English seven flying men missing, or they're missing. I hope they have on interloans because uh, other than that, I'll probably, I'll probably just break my rule of um, not getting a book myself and get myself through maybe through some not legal but technically legal uh, manner ways. Hey, everyone does it. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy still pretty good. I I ain't gonna. I am a. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis fan through and through, and I have not read something by him I absolutely hate yet. I have not read his Superman run. Keep that in mind. Deadpool, but he's not, it's not like with Colin Bunn with Brian Michael Bendis. It's not like with Colin Bunn where I really like his writing and don't understand why people don't like his writing sometimes. Uh, I've read only one series by Colin Bunn I didn't like. Everything else has been a knockout. Brian Michael Bendis, yeah, I understand why people don't like him. And they're, the downsides of ben Bendis are the same downsides I have, but not as much. How long are we going for? Wow, 37 minutes. Pretty short. Surprisingly short. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy went over. Deadpool, the bad blood one. Um, Really good. I really enjoyed this one. Pick it up if you haven't. There's You can either get the original graphic novel or the individual issues that they came out with recently. They've been doing that, they did that with Jessica, Jessica Jones' Bad Blood, too. The original graphic novel came out, then they came out with the individual issues. I don't know if there was more story in the individual issues that came out recently. There might may have been. When I was doing the math, I was going by what Marvel Comics said, how many pages each issue had. It, there might be, but I have no idea. Why didn't they plug this guy in? I have two chargers now. Uh, then finally, Ultimate... Oh, whoops. I wrote Ultimate Galactus Trilogy twice. <laughs> uh, I, I, one time I wrote it as Trilogy, and then the other time I wrote it as Ultimate. And I wasn't reading any ult any other Ultimate books, so there was no way for me to get confused. Did I read Ultimate War? I feel like I did. But I feel like I did. Did you guys hear that? My phone's doing that thing where it's like, oh, uh, yeah. The, 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 it's like a scratchy audio. I'll do this, like, I'll click it back and forth from the, uh, whatchamacallit to that. It's weird. Yeah, <laughs> send the email address. Alright. That, as I say, is that. Tomorrow, you will get my complete February... Um, no. <laughs> yeah, it's February, yep, yeah, mm-hmm. You'll get my complete November 2022 haul. Why am I saying I'm February? I don't know. That's it.